at you again from the porch. It's another beautiful morning on the porch slash office. Um, fixing to be another hot afternoon though, so I don't know if it'll be a full day outside or if I'll have to take the take the work inside. However, um, sitting out here, trying not to step on this slug. Where is he now? Oh, he's just completely on the bottom of my shoe. Um, so I've got a kamikaze slug out here on the porch. And it got me thinking over the last few weeks where um, a lot of my work and recreation and really just all the fresh air I get many days, I uh, get out here. Uh, I've also gotten, I have no count, but quite a few observations as well. And so I think maybe this is a good opportunity to kind of show you just kind of passively, if you keep like half an eye open, um, just what variety of things you might encounter. And so, um, you know, I think if there's any thought in your mind that it's too much work or, um, you know, that it takes too much equipment, um, you know, certainly I benefit from the camera that I, I use, but uh, I'm using the phone a lot too. And I think that if you're curious at all, you might be most curious or maybe should be uh, about what sort of critters are hanging out just right outside your door. And that's literally where we are, right outside my door. And so, um, again, low energy, low effort, um, passive sort of approach to uh, thinking up observations on iNaturalist to better understand what sort of species are around you. And, um, you know, certainly I'll put forth more effort in, in other uh, situations. Both on the porch, I'll more actively try to bring in, uh, you know, especially bugs, moths especially, and so I'll show you how that works um, using a supplemental light or a black light, uh, and really just you know taking the time to go around and find every single bug that's kind of in this little box, uh, sort of a seven by eleven foot box, um, and you'll be surprised probably how many of those things will show up too, and then certainly going out on hikes with the intention of finding as many different species as possible. Um, or just taking more casually, there's always there's always a sliding scale in between, right? So uh, it's not the sole purpose usually that I ever go somewhere, but uh, it's one of the things I'm most interested in is trying to figure out what is going on around me, what sort of species there are, uh, and then you can think broader about that. Once you've kind of identified what's there, more broadly, what are the implications? Why is it there? What other species care? Uh, what are its competitors? What's feeding on it? All those sorts of questions, the sort of ecological scope. Um, can't really come into play until you know what the players are, okay? All right, so the piece that was my nice morning out here on the porch, sounds like it's about to be ruined, maybe already has. Um, so I think I'll, I'll leave you with that, looking at passive observations on the porch, um, no effort, enjoy. Okay, time to have a look at what sort of animals have come through kind of passing by or otherwise coming up onto the porch during this quarantine, this work from home phase of life that we're in. So my idea is to show you how we got to this species list. Uh, that's the part that iNaturalist is relatively helpful with. but. You know, keep in mind, in the original video, I talked to you a little bit about how to get relatively good pictures. Now, relatively good pictures, when we look at what I came up with, again, that's not necessarily for National Geographic. It's good in the sense that you have the, uh, the identifying markers, the distinct features for any given plant or animal showing up. And so, obviously, today, animals are going to be our focus, but I'll show you how to kind of filter down to that point. And you can see there's a hint already here that I'm looking at animals, not plants that may happen to be close to or on the porch. Uh, incidentally, there's only going to be one of those that we want to kind of throw out of the batch. So before we look at iNaturalist itself, just to kind of let you know what has to happen to get to this point, um, out of about 3,000 observations that I've done, I want to focus just on the ones from my porch during the quarantine. Um, and so the way we'll do that is uh, 
I have to create a bounding box around my porch, which is something that, in general, the bounding box idea I introduced in the third video in this series. Uh, and same thing for the filters. So filtering by date, I'll be filtering from April 2nd. Uh, and that's something else I showed in the third video. Searching for animals is very similar to what I did with searching, for instance, for Japanese barberry in video four. Uh, and then I'll, I'll show you something I don't think that we've looked at before with the filters that I didn't, I didn't get into any detail with, at least. Um, but sort of what you'll come up with if you use the icons for different taxa, things like order and phylum, uh, basically just the different types of plants and animals that uh, would be filtered out for you on iNaturalist. And so I'll show you how those buttons work real fast and kind of what results we get from doing that. All right, so here we're on iNaturalist. Using my better judgment, I didn't uh, show you the bounding box all the way up to my porch. I thought that would be kind of weird. But anyway, realize that's been done using the map. Now I'm looking at the grid view, which is showing me the pictures, at least the, the ones that I led with, for each one of these observations. So you see the little pictures, or the little numbers in the corners are suggesting how many pictures go with each observation. Uh, I showed you in video two, how to pick which picture you want to lead with. And so that's kind of reflected here from what I've done. But then otherwise, there are some cases where I think maybe having a second or a third or a fourth picture, different views, different focus can help with some of these, especially small species. Uh, I mentioned that I was going to have to get a plant out. So there's a common land tan that's growing on the other side of the parking lot, but it's within my bounding box. And so I'll have to make sure that I get that out because that's not one of the transient things that was coming up to the porch. Otherwise, the rest of this was, all right? And so, uh, for instance, it kind of started, I was, I was encouraged, I guess, by a couple of green anoles that showed up. First, here's Scooby. His nephew, Scrappy, has come around too. And so they've been kind of daily visitors on the porch. A lot of this other stuff has been extra transient, showing up once, showing up for only a couple seconds at a time. Uh, but I've managed to, in the time I've been out there working anyway, kind of out of the corner of my eye, notice these things, got pictures of them. And so I mentioned not National Geographic, right? I mean, we're taking pictures that have backdrops of the concrete ground or the siding of the house or my blue jeans, right? So uh, the parking lot, there's not really any aesthetic value to a lot of this, um, but there is diagnostic value. So I mentioned that we're gonna need to do some filtering. This is again, similar to what we did in videos uh, three or four. I'll do number four, that callback first, focusing on animals. Okay, and so that's gonna take my one of my observations away. Actually, probably multiple because of the order I'm doing it in. Nope, just the one. So there was that lantana that's gonna be gone now. And I also wanna focus on just the time that I've been chilling on the porch, sort of working, sort of relaxing, um, getting these observations, and so, I'm going from April 2nd, all right? And so I've done that before, just to reinforce, you might have to click on the calendar, click on the date, that's gonna update your results. And so now I've got this search here. Now I realize I'm kind of coming at this from uh, the Explore tab where I've gone in and typed in my username as the person whose observations I wanna look at and so there's only one observer, that is me. 14 people have come along and helped me identify these though, so thank you. Um, and then we've got, otherwise the, the approach would be a much more direct just to click on your observations. So if you have an account and you're looking at your, you want to look at your observations, it's kind of a shortcut. Otherwise, I filtered down to just myself for these. Dated since April 2nd, bounty boxes around my porch, right? So. We're focused in geographically and temporally. And then on my observations, these are the categories that I mentioned before. Uh, I mentioned them just briefly, I think in video three, and now I'm looking at them again. Uh, and so I'll show you kind of the results that come along with this, but I can look at, for instance, just birds, which are class Avis. Or if I filter again, I could do birds and reptiles, reptilia. Right, so those two together. So you can look at multiple types of things at one time. I could have in a very kind of clunky way clicked on all of these except for the plants and except for the fungi and except for the protists or protozoans. And I would get 
pretty much all of the animals, but realize that there's actually a blind spot on this, which I'll address here in a moment. And so I could do it that way. I could focus on any one at a time, um, but just realize that these buttons are here. And that's a relatively neat shortcut that you can take if you're interested in one type of animal versus another, or if you're interested in just the plants or just the fungi. Uh, at any rate, those are the sort of buttons that I'm toggling here. So to go back and just kind of see a, a recap of what we saw on the porch, we'll switch back, pausing for just a second to kind of see again what those steps were. And moving on. So I mentioned that this, these were observations that just happened in passing at my convenience um, while I was out on the porch anyway, right? So just getting a little bit of fresh air while I was trying to work. And so I guess this could illustrate a couple of things. Uh, first of all, April 6th was a relatively busy day. I remember that being a morning where lots of birds were coming through. The sun was shining well enough that I could actually see them. I don't normally have very good light. They're usually backlit, so I get terrible pictures of birds most of the time. Uh, but then also some bugs were coming through as well. But otherwise, uh, that kind of shows how, I guess, the variability from day to day, good weather, good light, um, you know, birds happen to be singing and moving. You can have a relatively good day without really trying. That was throughout the day. And it was also cool enough that I was out there through the morning and afternoon both. But otherwise, there are days where it's too hot and so I'm only out there in the morning or I'm just seeing things that I already had before. And so there are lots of days where I picked off just one or two species. And that was actually uh, more than half of the observations I got. And certainly most of the days, it's just a couple things that I saw. I'm just trying to illustrate how kind of passive and easy and cumulative this process can be uh, in case you're intimidated by the idea of going on trying to find all these different organisms. Okay, so from my sort of seven by 11 foot box, uh, the birds, I think probably obviously right to you, weren't coming up to the porch so much as they were on the trees, uh, kind of hanging around. And so um, managed to see wrens, blue jays, and phoebes from there. Other birds I could actually see in the distance, um, including mockingbirds and uh, vultures, but they were too far away or too obscured to actually get a picture. And so by no means is this a you know, perfect um, representation. It is a sample of just kind of, again, what was convenient, what was within reach when, when I had the camera available to me. All right, sticking with the chordates or the vertebrates, uh, we're looking at both the reptiles and mammals here. And so again, the green anole, uh, a couple of them actually. Um, again, named, named and shouted them out. Uh, and then the fox squirrel as well. And so, um, you know, relatively large common animals to see here in central Texas. Uh, and then it got kind of interesting with the invertebrates. And so I've got slugs. So I, had, I saw one slug as the first one and only one that I've seen in Texas in about a year and a half of being here, um, at least in the city. I've, yeah, I've seen some on hikes before, I guess. But anyway, the three-band slug uh, that showed up on the last day of observing. Uh, and so that would be a gastropod. Uh, we've got the pill bug, which is a crustacean, so a land crustacean, uh, roly-poly, otherwise known. Uh, and then the centipedes and spiders are going to be arthropods. And so um, that's actually, these are kind of the exceptions among the arthropods. I'm going to see a lot more here in a minute when we look at the insects, but uh, I will point out jumping spiders are pretty cool. And in the observation that I got for this one, I'll show you in a second, the jumping spider, teeny tiny jumping spider, uh, was feeding on a little centipede. Okay, so as promised, note that neither of these are research grade um, because they haven't been identified down to species yet. But here's the listing for the centipede. I'll list him as the prey. Here's the jumping spider. And you know what, really, I mean, that's that might be National Geographic quality right there. Um, you know, featuring the lawn chair, of course, as the, the substrate. Um, real gritty, but pretty cool uh, seeing predation in action. At any rate, so you've got the predator, the jumping spider, and you know how teeny tiny he is uh, relative to a teeny tiny centipede that he's feeding on. Pretty cool. Anyway, back to the point. Uh, so I've got a variety here of invertebrates, and then the most diverse group, 
among the arthropods, um, so joining the centipede and joining the, the spider, but um, in a separate class, class insecta, you have the group of insects, and even within this, I've made it a point just to kind of click on the button that gives me insects, but if I have an interest beyond that, if I want to look at the coleopterans or the beetles, right, or if I want to look at the dipterans, the flies, uh, whatever it may be, there are different routes that I can kind of go from here. Uh, once I filter out for insects, which if my eyes don't betray me, yeah, there are insects. Uh, so looking at the insects from this group, note, of course, that there are actually more observations than there were species. So we saw 10 species there. Uh, that could be because of repeats, or it could otherwise be, uh, for instance, that like the I don't think the plant bugs were uh, specific enough to end up being part of our um, part of our species list. Okay, and so over time, a lot of these will get sorted out. They'll become research grade once they're identified down to species. Or in the meantime, things like this, where it's ants, bees, and wasps. Uh, you know, if it's if that's a an, a wasp of some kind, then they'll get narrowed down to that point, and they might be the general type of wasp, and then maybe we'll get down to a genus and to a species. But anyway, uh, if I wanted to pursue maybe easiest for the one that is down to species, the seven spotted lady beetle. Remember, I mentioned that was a coleopteran. So, so order coleoptera, and so that all that means is that it's a beetle, and so that's a huge order of bugs. Um, I showed in the past where uh, the fact that this is introduced, that's part of the symbology that I talked about in video four, that was the one before this, but what I wanted to kind of focus on is if we look at the species page real quick, uh, iNaturalist is very good about giving us all this detail. And so um, within the black spotted lady beetles, which is a tribe, so it's kind of between, uh, or just above rather the genus, um, but between family and genus, then we've got all these different genera that go along with it. And so you could explore any one of these uh, getting from the, the species page for the black spotted, or the seven spotted lady beetle. But then otherwise you can work your way up and you see as you go along, I, I, for instance, I said beetles, order coleoptera, insects, class insecta. That language of taxonomy that I've been using is here. And so you can click your way through, work your way up, or work your way back down using these links. And I encourage you to do so. You can see why having a camera, having a little bit of reach is a benefit. Um, but there's also, you know, in many cases, I, I had no trouble getting observations with the camera on my phone. And so, um, yeah, basically all I'm saying is if you're interested at all, there's no excuse, right? It's relatively easy to, to get the pictures. And if you work back through the previous videos in this playlist, then you'll see how I would approach anyway, taking those pictures from the field or from the porch and put, putting them online, putting them on a naturalist, making your general observations, your, your best guesses, um, and then hopefully learning a little bit more about what's going on, all right? So I'll show you some more, uh, you know, incrementally more uh, involved ways of getting observations here in future videos. But hopefully this gives you some inspiration to sit on your ass and get some observations. All right, have fun. So the porch means two very different things. If you're in a rural setting versus the urban hellscape that I'm in right now. We'll try to look at both at some point, but I promise you, uh, this can be done. Even here.